Good morning, booktubers, and all you other YouTubers out there. Yes, it's morning here. I just got home from work. I work nights, and I get home, and I pretend I'm a normal person after that, and I'm working in the house and doing content. It's time to do content. So, I want to take just a quick second to say thank you for all the new subscribers. I've had... Um, a batch of y'all over the past month just really come in there and um, I want to welcome you and thank you. All my subscribers are wonderful people. I enjoy your company. I enjoy your comments and responding to your comments. I enjoy it when you give me a thumbs up. I enjoy all that stuff. And um, it's nice to have subscribers. It really is. It just, it, it feels good. So thank you for helping me to feel good. Um, today, I'm doing a tag. Um, it's the 2024 Mid-Year Freak Out Tag. And um, I don't know that I'm really freaking out. Oh, yeah, I am freaking out. I found myself freaking out the other day when I was looking at all the books I have that that when am I going to get to these and do I even really need to bother to buy more ever again? Well, yeah, I do because I'm doing series and I don't have the entire series. So, yeah, at least in that sense, I'm going to have to buy more. And like I want to finish James A. Missioner and uh, there's a couple of his I still don't have. So I'll have to buy those. But I think my book buying is about to take a real low ebb there. Uh, so anyway, the 2024 Mid-Year Freakout Tag. I was tagged by Big Al Does Booktube. Uh, and if you haven't seen his channel, you need to go check it out. It's a great channel. It does some wonderful content. And um, he graciously tagged me in this. And I'm so glad he did. Okay, so let's jump in and start. Number one, the best book you've read in 2024. That was a tough one. And I, I finally narrowed it down to three that at this point could be my number one book at the end of the year. And I don't know which of the three to say is the best book I've read so far. Um, so I'm going to say all three of them. Uh, first off is I started the, I started the year with two of these, What a great start to the year. And those were the Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton. Um, then there's the Hunger by Whitley Strieber. And in a completely different vein, later in the year, I read Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. And all three of those books in different ways. I all got five stars on Goodreads. And we've got a sci-fi thriller. We've got a horror thriller. And then we've got Go Tell It on the Mountain, which is about as cerebral as it gets. Um, so even as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking I'm, I know which one is going to, at this point, if I had to do it at this point, would be my favorite book of the year. But we still got half a year to go, so we'll see. Um, so anyway, those are the three that are the current contenders. Uh, the Andromeda Strain, uh, if, if you don't know about it, is about a disease that, um, gets into Earth's atmosphere, um, by a probe that crashes. And, uh, the hunger is a twist on the vampire trope. Uh, it gives it a new original feel to it. And then Go Tell It on the Mountain is just a beautiful book about a young boy growing up, son of a, of a, um, a Pentecostal pastor. And, um, and it's just, it, it's, it's a wonderful read. Next, number two, 
best sequel read in 2024. It's actually an old book from the 70s. Um, we did a buddy read um, on MJ's Patreon. MJ Reading This Life, she has a Patreon channel. And um, every month there's a buddy read. And we did Love Story by Eric Siegel, which is a classic of the, of the 20th century. And um, it, it, was, it was just as wonderful as it was when I read it back in the 70s. Uh, but I'd never read the sequel. So I finally, after reading Love Story for the, I don't know, third, fourth time, I finally read Oliver's Story by Eric Siegel. And was very pleased with it. I um, I thought it was a, an adequate, more than adequate, um, sequel. It didn't wrap up the story. But you know how when you, you get to an end of a book and, and you wonder sometimes, what happens next for this main character? And... Um, that you were able to find out in this one. And um, a third book would not have been amiss if you know, Eric Siegel has passed away. Um, but uh, yeah, a third book would, wouldn't be too bad to know what happens next because it had kind of a grim ending. Um, number three, a new release you haven't read. Uh, and that is You Like It Darker by Stephen King. Um, it's out, and I don't even have a copy of it yet, but I will. And uh, I will read it. Just not yet. Um, it may even be a 2025 read. Uh, but yeah, that's a new release from this year that I haven't read yet. You Like It Darker by Stephen King. I've heard wonderful things about it. Um over booktube and um some groups i'm in on facebook um everybody's just raving about it that it's one of king's best and uh i'll be looking forward to seeing if it measures up number four the most anticipated read for the second half of 2024 for me this is a book called The Demon of Unrest by Eric Larson. Um, I have, uh, a, I'm a history buff, plain and simple, I'm a history buff. Uh, one of my favorite times of history is the Civil War here in the United States. And this book um, st apparently starts off with um, Lincoln's election to the presidency and takes it to um, the, the, the Confederate attack on Fort Sumter and all that that involved. Um, and I haven't read anything by Eric Larson yet. And he's written a number of books that have intrigued me by their descriptions and their titles and um and I I really need to start reading reading his books assuming I like the first one that I read you know maybe I'll go on to a second one even if I don't but I think I, I really think I'm going to like his books um and that one will probably be the first um being that it is about something I'm interested in so it's I forget when it's coming out. I didn't jot it down. Sometime in the autumn, I believe. The Demon of Unrest by Eric Larson. Number five, my biggest disappointment in 2024 so far. Um, that one was it was a heartbreaker for me. It was Sons and Lovers by D. H. Lawrence. I'd seen the movie. I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe even longer than that. And I loved the movie. I thought the movie was just wonderful. And I was so looking forward to reading the book. And I finally, I finally put it up the top of the TBR. And I read it. And it was one of the most boring 
books I've ever come across. So I was a little disappointed in that. Um, there were parts of it I liked, and it just seemed like there were these surges of awesome writing. And in between were these cement supports that were just dull as, as watching cement dry. And, um, oh well, so that's that was that. Uh, the number six, the biggest surprise in 2024. That one for me, I was um, hell, I was taking part in a reading event done by MJ. MJ again, I mentioned her earlier. Uh, and she's doing a read 24 banned or challenged books in the year 2024. And one of them I got. I got it off a list of banned books in the United States. And uh, it was a current book called Flamer by Mike Carato. And it was the biggest surprise of 2024 in that it was a graphic novel. Which I didn't realize going into it. But once I got it, it's like, okay, well, let's read it. I had avoided graphic novels like like they like they were herpes or something. I just they, I could not wrap my brain around all these people who loved graphic novels and like it's a comic book by any other name. Well, come to find out, it's not. And um, my first experience with a graphic novel was Flamer, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I am now open to the possibility of reading. More graphic novels, if one comes my way that I'm interested in reading. Uh, so that was uh, that was a big surprise for me. That a graphic novel was it's not just a comic book. I can tell you that it's just it's not just a comic book. It's it's just it's a visual novel. Is a better way to put it, I guess. And then number seven. Your new favorite author this year. So far, from the books I've read, uh, my favorite new author, new to me, is James Baldwin. And um, I still only read Go Tell It on the Mountain, but based on Go Tell It on the Mountain, I am I'm looking forward to reading more of his books. Uh, just got to get some other stuff out of the way. And uh, I, I, I just have a feeling I'm going to like his other books as much as I liked Go Tell It on the Mountain. Um, so yeah, so he's my new favorite author this year. And then we've got your newest fictional crush. I don't get a lot of crushes on fictional characters. Oh, Darn it, the one I picked I can't use on this. Because the character's not fictional. Oh. Doggone it. I can't use it. Um, I was going to use Josephine the Poodle from Every Night Josephine by Jacqueline Suzanne. But like I said, Josephine was real. She was an actual, actual, I was going to say actual person. She, yeah, she was an actual person. She was just in the poodle form. Um, but I guess I don't have to have an answer for that then. Because I just have not crushed on any fictional characters this year. And the older I get, the less I do it anyway. So, there is that. So... So I guess I don't have one for that one. Uh, number nine. Your new favorite character. Okay, so. My new favorite character. There is a series of books out there by James Scott Bell. And they are suspense novels, mystery novels. And the main character in all of these books is Mike Romeo. 
Well, why not? My name is Michael Romeo. His name is Mike Romeo. How much closer can you get without being spot on? And I've started reading the series, and I enjoy the character. I enjoy the stories. Um, so yeah, my uh, my new new do, 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 do. my new favorite character is what it is. Yep, is Mike Romeo from the Mike Romeo series by James Scott Bell. And what a thrill to come across it. It was a lot of fun reading a book about me, basically. Uh, except I don't think I'm quite as active as as this Mike Romeo. And um, I don't think I can I, I have the agility that this Mike Romeo has. <laughs> okay, then we have number 10, a book that made you cry. Um, going to double dip here. Uh, Flamer was my first graphic novel. Flamer also made me cry. Um, a lot of it hit home. Uh, Flamer is about a, a young man. I'll call him a young man. Um, because he's really not... He's go. He's in that that transition from childhood to manhood, and um, going from junior high school into high school, and he is bully bait. And let me tell you, when I was going through that that same time period, through all of through since elementary school, through high school, I was bully bait. And I was able to relate to this character in a lot of ways. And um, it gets to a point, and this is a bit of a spoiler in case you want to speed ahead a little bit. Um, it comes to a point where the main character actually takes the steps to commit suicide. Um, not something I, I did at that point in my life, but I did think about it. I was, I was a candidate for eventually taking the step of trying to kill myself because living, being bully bait is horrible life. And, um, I know some people, you know, just say, oh, just suck it up. Uh, No. No, no, let the bullies suck it up because what they're, they're the ones that are just, you know, I can't imagine what kind of adults these, these bullies grow into. I really don't. Anyway, off that soapbox. But yeah, that book made me cry because I was able to relate to the main character. Mind settling down? Come on, settle down. I could use the neck rest. No? You're just going to stand on my shoulders? Oh, we got Toby here, in case you didn't notice. Toby's an old man like me. Um, he is... He's what, 15? 15 and 15 years? You doing okay? He's arthritic. Hard of hearing. And still lovable as can be. Just lovable. Anyway, back to this. Um, Flamer made me cry. Okay. 11. Book that made you happy. Okay, so I can use this one now. I was going to double dip on this one too, but it turned out I couldn't use it. Um, but a book called Every Night Josephine by Jacqueline and Suzanne. And it was a book all about her experiences buying and raising a poodle and the book is an absolute delight you you cannot read this book and not be happy it is just such an upbeat book josephine is a character all her own and um You'd see why I would pick her for 
a book character that I would I would crush on um, when you read it. It's by Jacqueline Suzanne. Came out in the 1950s, I believe. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, in case you don't know, the 20th century is my my focus. My um, the the place I like to live in when it comes to books. Um, I read older books. I read newer books. Um, but the majority of what I read is 20th century. Um, I just, you, you, if you go back and watch some of my videos, you'll see very often I'll just tout the wonderfulness of 20th century fiction. Okay, so, book that made me happy, Every Night Josephine. Number 12, your favorite 2024 book to movie adaptation. And here I drop the ball. I haven't been watching television. I haven't been watching movies. I don't know what's been adapted. I mean, I, yeah, I kind of know. I know they did a new um, adaptation of Shogun, which I hear is wonderful. Uh, but I haven't seen it, so I can't really say it's my favorite because I haven't seen it. I understand that they've done a new version of Dune, and they're doing it in chapters, basically. Like, uh, they did... Um, 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 Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, but again, I haven't, I haven't seen any of the new Dune, so I don't know if it's good or not. So unfortunately, I cannot give an answer to this question. Um, because I've just been paying attention to books instead of watching stuff. Uh, let's see. My favorite video this year. Uh, and it's supposed to be, as if I understand it right, a video of my own. It's kind of a video of my own. But it's not, not totally. I was a part of it. Um, my two friends. Alan and Greg. Alan is... Uh, Big Hard Books and Classics, and Greg is another Bibliophile Reads, and the two of them do a Monday Night Live show uh, where they have a guest, different guest every week, and I was honored to be asked to be one of their guests, and it was a blast. I totally enjoyed it, and hint, hint, guys, I do it again. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how good I was on it. Um, but, but I, I did. I had a, I had a, a blast of a time doing it. Um, yeah, and to check them out, I think they get posted. If I'm not mistaken, they get posted on, on Greg's channel, another bibliophile reads. Um, so if you go back to the first one in April, I think I was the first Monday in April, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Go back and, and you'll you'll find it. And it was it was a lot of fun again, a lot of fun, and and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And number fourteen, the most beautiful book this year. Now this one, I wasn't sure if it was talking about a beautiful book in appearance, the cover artwork, the packaging. Or was it a beautiful book because of its content? So I thought about it for a while, and I realized that I haven't read any books this year so far that have attractive covers or have good artwork inside or anything like that. So I went with beautiful content. And I chose an odd little book that I read that was totally enjoyable. Um, and yes, I would call, I would, I would consider it that it was a beautiful book. Uh, it's The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. And, uh, what made it beautiful is the heart that went into it, into this memoir. Um, 
it's it's about a young Native American in school who decides he's going to go to an all white school uh, because for because of a better curriculum and he he goes through some stuff he overcomes some stuff and good good things happen bad things happen all the way through but the heart that it's written with is a it, it it's a heart of hope so all the way through it is hope even when things don't go right um so that makes it that made it for me a beautiful book and uh i recommend it to anybody it's a sharp book you'll fly right through it the audio book it's it's read by the author himself the audio book is a treat absolute treat and then finally number 15 what books do i do i really need to read before the end of 2024 i came up with one i know there's a lot that i want to read but i really feel the need to read my name is barbara by barbara streisand reason being um when i was about when i was 12 years old um there was this local station that played old movies um and when well, yeah, this wasn't really even an old movie at that time but and and it was it was a weekly thing every sunday night and even though it, may, it meant i i had to stay up late to watch them my mother gave me the <laughs> blessing and said just make sure you get up for school in the morning and so I could stay up whatever movie was was playing I could watch it and I watched whatever was playing because one I love movies still do love movies and two man I could get to stay up late so um, I, I stayed up to watch this movie called Funny Girl, and I didn't know a lot about it. I've heard I had heard Barbara Streisand's name, didn't know much about her at all. And uh, that movie started, and I I swear, ten minutes into that movie, I was head over heels in love with Barbara Streisand, and from that point on, it was. Where are the rest of her movies? Where are her recordings? I need to collect them. Um, my allowance went to many Barbara Streisand records. Um, and and anytime there was a movie on television that was a Barbara Streisand movie, I was in front of the screen. I would beg for the TV if it conflicted with something somebody else wanted to watch. I would... It's, it's it, w it was like, you know, I'll I'll do your chores, you know, for my sister. I'll do your chores. I'll wash the dishes. I'll do all kinds of stuff. And and uh, or if it was my parents, it was like I swear I'll I'll chop enough wood for the winter. And you know, anyway, I loved and still love to this day, Barbara Streisand. She is just amazing. And um, I haven't read her memoir yet. It came out last year in November, I think. It came out right after I started the um, Read What You Own Challenge, which meant I couldn't buy any books. Um, so I'm, not, I'm now over that. And I can... I don't think I'm going to buy it, though, because that's a big book. And these author cans holding big books sometimes can get a little difficult but i am going to get it from the library the library has it and i can just read it on my tablet um i also consider getting the audio book because she reads the audio book but if i got that from the library it would um it would be a two-week limit and I don't know if I could get through a book this thick. It's over a thousand pages, guys. Um, but you know, I do have an Audible credit. 
I have an Audible credit. I can get Barbara Streisand memoir, my name is Barbara, on audiobook. And I can ta tag team the audiobook and the library book and uh, get through that much faster. Wonderful idea. Thank you all for giving me that idea. See, that's why I love subscribers. Okay, guys, that's it. That is the the 2024 mid-year freakout tag. And you know what? This just shows that I, I have become such a rambler because I'm over 30 minutes again. And um, Big Gal, I think, took 15 minutes to do this. This, this tag. Um, but there you go. There you have it. Um, check out my friend's channels. I'll, um, I'll put them in the description. Uh, you know, I mentioned MJ. I mentioned Alan at Big Card Books and Classics. I mentioned Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads. And, of course, Big Al does BookTube, who tagged me in this. Oh, and I have to tag people. I should have brought a pen. I don't have a pen. But, okay, yes, I do know who I want to tag. Okay? I want to tag um, Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl. I want to tag... Um, yep, yeah, there we go. Drawing a blank. Um... Hold on, just a second. Okay, I'm back. And, um, I've got the people that I want to tag. I got them. I just had to look them up to, to know. I knew who I wanted to tag, and I just couldn't come up with their names. I did work all night. I really did. <laughs> and when you work third shift, sometimes your brain goes on vacation. But I'm doing Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl. Uh... Pick your pop culture poison. Guys, if you haven't checked out that channel, check it out. It's a hoot. I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, Reading Ideas, who is um, someone I'm newly connected with and um, would love to, to learn more about. And tags are a great way to do that. Uh, Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. I've known Kelly since... Uh, since about the time I started on BookTube, and she is a treat as well. Uh, just love her 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 um, content. Um, I'm going to do Greg and Alan, both of them that I mentioned, who do the Monday Night Show live. They may have already done it though, and that's a possibility because um, they're really popular. They may have gotten tagged in this already. Uh, I want to tag Book Chat with Pat. As uh, another channel I've started following um, in the last few months, I guess it is. And also in the last few months, I've been started following Rainer Reed stuff. And um, again, both of these, Pat and Rainer, just they are a delight to watch. Um, all of these people are. I wouldn't be friends with them if they weren't. Um, <laughs> so uh, check them all out. And remember to check out Big Al, does, does BookTube. He, he's the one who got me into this. And that's it for this time. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.